Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Grace Fox. Visit my website, gracefox.com, to learn more about my teaching and writing ministry. Subscribe to my updates and receive some lovely printables to enhance your spiritual life. And now, after this short word from our sponsor, we'll continue our Lent series with a discussion on today's Bible verse, Matthew 27, 22. Today's Bible verse is Matthew 27, 22. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. I was eight years old when I understood that I had an important decision to make, a decision that would determine my eternal destiny. The question was, What will I do with Jesus? I believed he loved me. I believed he was God's son who did nothing wrong during his 33 years on earth. I also believed that, despite his doing nothing wrong, he died on the cross to pay the penalty I deserved for everything I'd done wrong. These things about Jesus begged for a response, so I had to decide what I would do with Jesus. Yesterday, Kyle talked about what the religious leaders and Herod and his henchmen did with Jesus. They mocked him vehemently and then threw a beautiful cloak over his shoulders before sending him back to Pilate. That's where today's verse finds us, in Pilate's presence, as he tries to determine what to do. Within the context of Matthew twenty-seven twenty-two, we learn that the custom of that day was for the governor to release a prisoner during the Passover celebration. On this year, a notable prisoner named Barabbas was up for pardon. Mark fifteen seven says he'd committed murder during an uprising against the Roman government. His involvement in the insurrection made him an enemy of Rome and thus possibly a hero for the Jews. As the crowds gathered around Pilate, the governor received a message from his wife. She said Jesus was innocent and urged Pilate to let him go because she'd had a frightening dream about him the night before. Without Pilate's knowing, the priests and religious leaders were circulating amongst the crowd at that time and persuading the people to demand that Pilate release Barabbas. Rather than listen to his wife's concerns, Pilate turned to the crowd and asked the question, Which of these two do you want me to release? The crowd, influenced by the religious leaders who were envious of Jesus and wanted him gone, shouted, Barabbas! And that's when Pilate asked the question in today's verse. What shall I do then with Jesus, who's called the Messiah? The crowd responded, Crucify him! Imagine the ruckus and the roar that terrible night, and imagine how Pilate may have felt in the moment. He knew Jesus had done no wrong. He knew the religious leaders were jealous of this man who claimed to be the Messiah. He knew his wife believed Jesus was innocent, but he caved into peer pressure and politics. What did Pilate do with Jesus then? He ordered him to be flogged and he condemned him to a brutal Roman crucifixion. The New Testament contains numerous stories about what other people did with Jesus. Fishermen and tax collectors left their professions to follow him. Jairus, the leader of the local synagogue, went looking for him and asked him to restore his 12-year-old daughter's health. Another desperate father trusted Jesus to free his son from demon possession. A woman who'd suffered with a chronic condition that left her a social outcast for 12 years touched the hem of his garment. A blind beggar sitting by the roadside called out to him to restore his sight. Lepers and the lame came to Jesus to be made well. A woman, who'd been married four times and was currently living with a fifth man, gave Jesus a cup of water to drink and then trusted him to quench her spiritual thirst. 
Another woman washed his feet with her tears and anointed them with expensive perfume as an act of worship and gratitude. And there's more, but not of a happy or victorious nature. On the same night Pilate condemned Jesus to death, Jesus' disciples deserted him because they were afraid of the leaders and the crowd turning on them too. And then Peter denied him three times when a servant girl recognized him as one of Jesus' followers. We're all faced with the same question, but unlike Pilate, we dare not allow the crowd or the popular vote to influence us. You see, someday each one of us will stand before God and account for what we did with Jesus, the Messiah. Let's never let it be said that we ever choose someone or something over him. I settled that all-important question when I was eight years old and committed to following him. My friend, I encourage you to do the same because your answer to the question, what will I do with Jesus, determines your eternal destiny. If you haven't already done so, I urge you to accept his free gift of salvation by confessing your sin and acknowledging your need for him as your Savior. But take your faith a step further and make him your Lord. That is, give him first place in your life. Invite him to take control over every personal desire and detail of your life and then worship him as he deserves. Philippians chapter 2 says that someday every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord over all. So let's make our lives a dress rehearsal for what lies ahead by learning to walk with an attitude of worship and praise to Jesus, Messiah, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Let's pray. Jesus, open our hearts to better understand who you are. Forgive us for the times we've disobeyed your directives or doubted your promises. Cleanse us from the times we've loved things more than we've loved you. Help us, Lord, to hold you in the highest esteem and live a life that brings you the honor you deserve. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. 